The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second ICLE webinar on the Cities and Regions Talanoa Dialogues, taking place today, Wednesday, 21st March at 10 and 16 o'clock Central European Time. My name is Ji San Huang. I am Senior Climate Advocacy and Policy Officer at ICLE World Secretariat. I am a panelist as well as I'll be a facilitator of today's webinar. On behalf of ICLE, I would like to extend my heartfelt welcome to all of you. Before we begin our webinar, let me give you a quick technical introduction to today's webinar. First of all, you're automatically on the muted mode, and I would like to kindly ask that you remain muted till the end of all the presentations. Second, uh, you have a choice to uh, type in your questions during uh, any time of this webinar, so please feel free to use this question box during uh, the proceedings of this webinar. Last but not least, this webinar is being recorded and in keeping with the principles of openness and transparency, this webinar recording as well as the PPT slides will be shared with all the registered participants of today's webinar. And now with that, let me move on to uh, introducing my fellow panelist, Mr. Yunus Arikan. Mr. Arikan is Head of Global Policy and Advocacy at ICLE World Secretariat, and he is also the Local Governments and Municipal Authorities Constituency Focal Point to the UNFCCC. Now with that, let us get started with today's webinar. So today's webinar will have three components. First of all, the UN Bonn Climate Change Conference April-May sessions uh, will be introduced and uh, I'll be sharing updates uh, regarding this uh, agenda item with you. And secondly, uh, more updates on the Talanoa Dialogue uh, have uh, em em emerged since uh, we last held our webinar in February. So building upon the overview mandates and context, I will give you also updates um, from the presidencies of uh, the COP. And last but not least, Eunice will provide further updates on the cities and regions Talanoa Dialogue's progress. Now, firstly, let us touch upon the UN 2018 Bonn Climate Change Conference. Uh, we call this SBS 48 as well because that is the uh, 48th session of uh, the two permanent subsidiary bodies of uh, the UNFCCC, which is the subsidiary body for scientific and technological advice, or what we call uh, SUBSTA. And the other permanent subsidiary body under the convention uh, would be the subsidiary body for implementation. So these two uh, SBs, subsidiary bodies, will have their 48th session. And hence we call this session the April-May session, alternatively SBs 48. Now the SBs 48 will also feature a meeting of another um, ad hoc subsidiary body called APA which stands for Ad Hoc Working Group on the Paris Agreement. And the fifth part of the first session of this working group, uh, uh, this uh, subsidiary body will take place. Now, as, as you all know, this year is quite an important uh, year for the whole global climate process. One, because um, hopefully parties will finalize the Paris Agreement Work Program, the PAWP, at uh, COP24 in December this year. And this year is also a significant milestone year because the uh, previously known as Facilitative Dialogue, uh, now known as the Talanoa Dialogue, uh, will be um, rolled out throughout this year as an year-long process. Now, uh, the vast majority of the work uh, of the PAWP, the Paris Agreement Work Program, will be under the purview of the APA, but in fact it's actually uh, the governing bodies, subsidiary bodies, as well as constit constituted bodies uh, under the convention that are mandated to work on this uh, PAWP. 
So uh, those uh, will form the, the vast majority of the work that will be going into uh, the two weeks of the SVEs. And on top of that, there are, there are several mandated events. And uh, I selected here those that are most relevant to the local and regional con um, constituency as well as um, for the Talanoa dialogue process, which is a process called the technical examination process. And they have uh, two, it's a two-pronged approach. So one on mitigation and the other one on adaptation. And uh, this, uh, what we call TEP, the technical examination process, uh, this, this year is quite important because uh, according to the uh, outcome document, uh, the decision 1CP23 emanating from the Bonn Climate Change Conference COP23 last year, uh, outcomes of this TEP M and A on mitigation and adaptation would feed into the Talanoa dialogue this year. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with the UNFCCC process uh, will know that um, the SVs will also feature lots of uh, side events and exhibits during the two weeks. And side events uh, will focus on the most important um, elements um, such as enhancing ambition and, and this implementation as well as uh, the means of implementation and support. Now, towards uh, COP24, we are in April and the COP uh, will take place in December. We're not too far away. And then uh, we wanted to give you a quick overview and update on who is who. Uh, most notably, we have received news recently that uh, the COP23 presidency has uh, has new chief negotiator, Ambassador Adao Nivalu. So um, succeeding Ambassador Khan, he will be representing the COP23 presidency, leading uh, the negotiations. Now we, um, continuing from last year, Minister Seriratu will continue on um, as the high-level champion from the Fijian presidency. And we also know that from the incoming Polish presidency side, we have uh, Mr. Tomasz Khrushchev, um, Special Envoy on Climate Change, as the high-level champion. So going into, at least for the April-May sessions, we will be uh, expecting to see a lot of uh, cooperation among these uh, three uh, leaders from uh, both presidencies, guiding non-party stakeholders um, as they prepare input for the Talanoa dialogue process. And um, holding this oversight role for all these uh, champions and uh, the chief negotiators would be also the, uh, the president and also the president designate. And uh, continuing from last year, we still have a uh, prime minister of Fiji, His Excellency Bani Manara as uh, COP23 president. And for the uh, incoming presidency side on, on Poland, um, we, are, we are still uh, waiting to see who would actually uh, be confirmed to be this year's uh, president designate. Now, going into this uh, process, uh, we are at, at the beginning of a very exciting process, uh, which is um, uh, the the Paris Agreement has this pledge and assess five-year cycles. Um, it's formally uh, it's formalized under the name of Global Stock Take, which was mandated to uh, take place from 2023. But uh, the facilitative dialogue, which is now known as the Talanoa Dialogue, was also mandated uh, from the same decision that adopts uh, the Paris Agreement to take place this year in order to assess the collective progress towards uh, the long-term goal of the Paris Agreement and as we all know from the outcomes of COP23 now this has been opened up as an year-long process um, encouraging input from both not just parties but also from non-party stakeholders. So as you can see from this uh, diagram uh, looking into this uh, mid-century uh, low emissions uh, strategies plans we are at the, ve at the very beginning of this uh, very important arc in the climate process so this year we will have uh, hopefully the rule book adopted and the, the um, action the action agenda the uh, global climate action process will also be uh, stimulated to support uh, the Paris Agreement and the NDC implementation. Thank you. 
as well as we will have the uh, California summit, the Global um, Climate Action Summit in, uh, in this year as well, which will lead into then the Leaders Summit convened by the UN Secretary General. And then in 2020, the second round of NDCs uh, are, are due to be submitted. And as non-party stakeholders, uh, we are fully uh, gearing up for that moment uh, from this year so that through the Talana dialogue discussions, we will be able to provide as much input as possible towards raising the ambition and also to fulfill uh, implementation of NDCs, which will then pave the uh, strong foundation going into 2023 where the uh, global first global stock take will take place and now so that 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 kind of trajectory we are seeing to be continuing into uh, 2015 now, uh, this is the uh, Talano Dialogue Portal set up by the uh, UNFCCC Secretariat. And as you know, this uh, website um, contains a wealth of information that is worth uh, browsing through. And some of those key information I tried to capture uh, in my next uh, slides onwards as well. And before we go into that, let me give you a quick overview on the, uh, the mandates and the context of the Talano Dialogue that we have uh, this year. So the Talana dialogue didn't just come uh, out of nowhere, but it actually is uh, has has a history of opening up the doors for non-party stakeholders um, entering into the um, global process. So in uh, December 2015 uh, at COP21, when we had the Paris conference, um, there was the uh, decision 1 CP21, which is the adopting decision of the Paris Agreement, which mandated the facilitative dialogue 2018 uh, would take place to collect uh, to assess the uh, collective progress. Now, uh, b uh, building upon this mandate, we had this uh, SB46 last year in May 2017, and uh, there was a workshop uh, that took place under the um, guidance of the SBI chair. Um, under one of the agenda items called Arrangements for Intergovernmental Meetings, during which we discussed uh, how to enhance stakeholder engagement uh, to the UNF, at the UNFCCC process. And one of the conclusions of that uh, process was to encourage uh, the presidencies to hold open dialogues with um, parties and non-party stakeholders, um, providing as much, um, much, of a, much of a decision power, a much of a agenda set power as possible to non-party stakeholders as well and also to provide equal opportunities for both parties and non-party stakeholders to be seated side by side to, to, to talk about how to enhance their cooperation. Based on this uh, mandate uh, during COP23, the first open dialogue took place in Bonn in November 2017, uh, during which uh, the Fijian COP23 presidency indeed uh, stayed true to, uh, stayed true to the to the mandates uh, spirit by opening doors for both parties and non-party stakeholders and uh, they were indeed uh, given equal opportunities for their dialogues and, and their interventions and now the Talanoa dialogue uh, 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 sort of uh, takes all these uh, milestones into into account and in decision 1 CP 23 which is uh, one of the um, outcome documents of COP23. In Annex 2 of that document, you will see uh, what's called the approach to the Talanoa dialogue, which significantly expands the original mandate given by uh, COP21, which only indicated uh, an event called a facilitated dialogue taking place in 2018, which has now been expanded into a year-long process um, consisting of uh, preparatory phase and political phase. So the preparatory phase of the Talanoa Dialogue is uh, is a long process, uh, an year-long process. The Talanoa Dialogue was launched officially at COP23, and uh, the preparatory phase, uh, pre preparatory phase of the Talanoa Dialogue, was mandated to start from January this year, to to go all the way to COP24. And during the second week of COP24, uh, around that time when the, when the high-level delegates actually arrive at COP, the political phase of the Talanoa Dialogue will then be started. 
And as I mentioned, uh, the technical examination process will be feeding into the uh, preparatory phase of the Talanoa dialogue. As you can see from the diagram on the preparatory phase, uh, building upon the three questions, of where are we, where do we want to go? How do we get there? Uh, there is that TEMS uh, technical experts meetings um, feeding into those Talanoa discussions, which will then be captured in a summary report. And uh, in the lead up to COP24, then the Secretariat will prepare synthesis reports capturing the submit, submitted input from parties and non-party stakeholders. And another input going into this would be the IPCC 1.5 special, special report. Now that will then prepare a solid ground for a minister then to deliver, uh, uh, to deliberate upon the outcomes of the Talano dialogue and to provide a further steps to build upon the achievements um, uh, made by the Talano dialogue process. Now, uh, going into the SBS concretely, there's uh, there's been a document released by the presidencies on the uh, guidance uh, for the process of the Talano dialogue. Um, and then this, uh, I tried to capture the, um, the exact um, exact run of the show, so to speak, of the Talanoa dialogue during the May sessions. So it'll uh, basically have three components, opening and discussions on the three key questions and closing. So the opening and closing will be in the plenary setting. And the uh, the vast majority of the work will, of course, be devoted to the um, this discussion on the three questions of where we are, uh, where do we want to go, and uh, how do we get there, which will take place in the middle Sunday, which is uh, 6th of May. And the um, outcomes of this uh, session will then be reported back to the uh, closing plenary. And uh, submissions uh, uh, are open now uh, through the Talana Dialog portal that I showed you earlier. Um, by the deadline of 2nd of April, if you make your submissions, if you make your submissions to the 2nd of April, uh, this will, will, will this will then be captured as a synthesis a report uh, created by the Secretariat. And any other input after that deadline will also be uh, still posted on on the on the portal, and it will then be captured in the the, the second synthesis report that will then capture out um, submissions all the way to the 29th of October. Now, just to give you more details on the in-depth discussions on the 6th of May, the Sunday, there will be uh, groups, uh, parallel groups, uh, discussing the three questions in a sequential manner. So each group will uh, touch upon each of the three questions um, sequentially, and each question was given about two and a half hours. And each group will have 35 participants, 30 from parties and five from non-party stakeholders. Uh, each group will have a Fijian moderator. And each of those 35 um, participants is invited to share one positive and one challenging story regarding NDC implementation and how to raise ambition. And uh, when it comes to the engagement of non-party stakeholders, uh, 33 seats are allocated for um, registered NGO organizations, uh, the observers, the traditional NGOs um, through the accreditation process. And the other non-party stakeholders are also allocated uh, 33 seats. And the application process is open through the Secretariat's Talana Dialogue website. And uh, in order to be eligible, you need to apply by uh, 29th of March. And now, the Talana Dialogue's uh, three key questions. Um, where are we? Where do we want to go? And how do we get there? Recently, uh, the guidance documents on the um, submissions template uh, has been released as well. So there are templates for each of those three questions, focusing on some of the key items that are um, encouraged to be captured in your submissions. So on the, under the first question of where are we, um, the templates ask for the commitments and concrete uh, progress made since the adoption of the Paris Agreement and an impact that can be calculated in a quantitative manner. And for the second question of where do we want to go, um, this is about uh, vision and also the template also asks for any new commitments that can uh, feed into this process and including how linkages can be made to other global frameworks such as uh, SDGs.
And last but not least, uh, under the third question of how do we get there, the templates try to capture um, how the institutional mechanisms can be better arranged to support non-party stakeholders. For example, what, what role the UNFCCC Secretariat can play in this and any concrete solutions to actually achieve um, NDC goals and uh, collaboration uh, models as to how to enhance cooperation between parties or between non-party stakeholders, and this also includes uh, means of implementation in the in the um, in the models of financing. So either public or private financing models that are relevant to the question of how do we get there can also be addressed under the submissions um, template. Now, let me just touch upon briefly on this uh, technical examination process at SV48. As I mentioned, uh, there are two tracks, one on mitigation and adaptation. And uh, the, the topic, each year there is a different topic, and this year's topic uh, is for the mitigation is industry, implementation of circular economies and uh, waste reuse prevention solutions. So any uh, organizations that have expertise in this area are, are well Welcome to provide input to this process by participating in this. And for the adaptation, this year we have the theme of adaptation planning for vulnerable groups, communities, and ecosystems. So again, this uh, very much relates to the Talano dialogue questions, and also any organizations with expertise are also welcome to provide input as well. And the out outcome documents, um, the summary documents of, of these two processes, will be then um, captured. And this will then feed into the Talano dialogue process as well. Now, uh, with this, uh, I would like to conclude my part of the presentation, which mainly concerned the overall global process coordinated by uh, the UNFCCC uh, under the guidance of the presidencies. Now, with that, I would like to give the floor to Eunice, uh, uh, who will give you further um, further updates on the cities and regions Talanoa dialogues, as well as uh, updates from the recent WRI webinar where he was a panelist. Eunice, over to you. Thank you, Jisun. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good afternoon, good morning to all of you. Um, uh, as you have seen, uh, from this uh, last slide, the Talana dialogue is, is taking place in an interestingly uh, heavy uh, agenda that is containing a number of events other than the UN process. And actually, this is the main uh, logic of this. Uh, how do we contribute with the cities and regions Talana dialogues that we are organizing as the networks um, of local and regional governments? And now, I am now switching to my screen to show that slide uh, for you uh, and then the rest of the uh, other other uh, details of our webinar and cities and regions Salona dialogues. So just to, to recap, uh, this year uh, there will be key uh, events like um, after the, the May sessions, there will be a global climate action summit in, New, in, in, in California. Uh, where we would also have the chance to hear some of the information probably in this round if we can have the colleagues from California joining us. There will be a special report, a release of the IPCC special report um, uh, and of course traditional summits of G20 will take place. So this is where the whole process will of course receive feedbacks um, while while we are running towards COP, uh, Katowice and COP24. So by the way we thank WRI for this slide as well. So in, in, in summary, cities and regions dialogue is in fact an effort to push the multi-level action on climate. And, and that was a process that we started since the beginning of the year where we have Global Covenant of Mayors and you inhabit it as our spatial partners. Just to recap, um, when, why, why are we doing this? Uh, there is a legal background for that. First of all, Paris Agreement refers that for the first time in the history of UN climate action, there is a reference to engagement of all levels of governments in the preamble. It's in the document itself. So obviously, the life after Paris Agreement or the implementation of the Paris Agreement will be significantly different than what was in the case for UNFCC and Kyoto Protocol. The second point is that the whole Paris Agreement, in fact, has a uniqueness in the sense that most of the work 
will be defined and, and designed at home. The national level action is more important than ever. The second one is the COP23 decision, as Jason has mentioned, the Talana Dialogue, uh, which was an original one-off event, has moved into a year-round process. And it was us, as you would see in the third part uh, of this slide, which is the, the demands of the local and regional governments at COP23, our bond Fiji commitment, our declaration, our all advocacy position was that to, to request or encourage parties to open this process to a broader community. And in fact, they have been listening to our calls. They have opened uh, this, this, this uh, doors. So we have to now fill in it. So we have to, we have to deliver what we have asked for, meaning that every city and the region has the chance and has the potential to contribute to the review of NDCs and put their contribution to the table. And of course, we will use the submissions as well. And the last point why we are excited is that just after COP in at the One Planet Summit, the Global Covenant of Mayors also announced a call for action on vertical integration of NDCs. There are numerous uh, initiatives on this front, but this initiative of the Global Covenant was of course very important. Uh, this was the political or legal basis, and here's the factual basis why we are excited to be a part of this process. First of all, we know that the current NDCs are not enough. Even they are implemented, they will not be taking us towards the 1.5 trajectory. We, secondly, we know that cities or urban communities or regions contribute significant to the global emissions, and they are vulnerable. Therefore, any national context of climate action should refer how they will be engaged in the process. And the third, we are now also aware that various research and reports uh, from carbon climate registry to global covenant uh, assessments show a significant reduction potential or commitment that, that should be tapped and the and the sees that if these were well adopted into the national documents, maybe we could be much more confident that we will be going on the uh, 1.5 trajectory. And the lastly, uh, even the existing NDCs have some sort of an uh, urban action that is uh, summarized by UN Habitat, but we would like to clarify how much these were discussed with the national, with the local and regional governments, or how much more this could be increased and how much visible this could be shown into the, into the NDCs in the future rounds and the existing ones. So through this Talana Dialogues, we want to demonstrate three things. First of all, we want to translate the global process to the realities of the priorities of local and regional governments. As we said, every stakeholder, business, farmers, or, or civil society groups, grassroots, have different priorities, and we would like to focus on our priorities. Second, Paris Agreement is an important element for a, a multi-level governance, and we would like to demonstrate in collaboration with other sustainable agenda, agendas through this process. And most importantly, this is the first time that commitments under Paris Agreement is being discussed. Let's recall, Paris Agreement was announced in December, and the INDCs, the intended do document, in the intended contributions was prepared before Paris Agreement was adopted. So all these visions of multi-level governance, all these visions of the new type of action was not onto the table for, for parties or for national governments to take into account while preparing their NDCs. So these are now not exactly the same realities. Therefore, the Talana Dialogue is an excellent opportunity for us to bring the, 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 the NDCs into reality, more like a reality check, and really have a discussion on what can be done further. This Citizen Regions Dalana Dialogues was a process kicked off at the Kuala Lumpur World Urban Forum in February, particularly with an aim to open this debate on climate action to urban communities and ministers of urbanization who are not necessarily as involved as ICLE or as other partners have been involved, because now this is the opportunity for us to make a mobilization of a collective uh, community at all levels and at all countries. Since February, uh, we as ICLE, had, uh, as the facilitator of the process, had made numerous consultations with our partners. Everybody had, had checked their agendas. And we have listed now 24 events where there will be a significant discussion 
on Talana dialogue. Some of them will have uh, really dedicated sessions. Uh, some of them will be part of the existing initiatives. Uh, but we are happy that this list shows from the north and south, from the, uh, the east and west, from smaller towns to, to mega cities and regions uh, in Europe, in Africa, in all continents. There are, there are uh, preparations. Uh, ICLE and our, all partners of the LGMA and a number of cities have started to make their preparations. Uh, eight of those events have already taken place and, and we will share some of the feedbacks and uh, the rest is to come. Uh, and we are excited because there is around 20 or 30 more events are on the planning and is not included in this list. But in the next couple of weeks, we are confident that the dates of these events are also clarified. So we can confidently say that local and regional governments are the most active constituency that has responded to the Talana dialogue process as an outcome of COP23. Two examples, uh, we, have a, uh, uh, we were really lucky because we have started with two ambitious countries, one Canada from the north, from the Olaf countries, and one Indonesia. Uh, both of them were actively involved in the Friends of Cities, especially Indonesia was one of the first Friends of Cities. Um, and in that, uh, both of these events, you can find the portfolio of, of events that we'd like to gather. For example, in, in the Edmonton Cities IPCC, we had announced the Canadian Dialogue will be held with FCM and, and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and the City of Montreal. But the press conference was attended by the Minister of Santa Lucia, an important, ambitious, uh, pioneering small island city in Caribbean. So we had councillors, we had uh, city staff, and we have experts like ICLE staff. So this diversity shows the spirit of how Talana dialogues would be convened. Similarly, here the second photo shows uh, the family photo of the ambitious city promises participants in Indonesia. In the middle of this photo, you can see Rahmat Vidolar. He is the special envoy of the president of Indonesia. He is well known for the, the, the presidency of the COP uh, in Bali, which kicked off the Bali roadmap. And here you can see the representatives of national governments from different ministries, environment, planning, urbanization, as well as three different city representatives, Jakarta, Baikasi, Tangerang, uh, and, and these are, uh, of course, they have different capacities, uh, but this is showing the diversity of possibilities of contribution of local and regional governments. And we have even civil society representatives like WWF and Seoul Metropolitan Government, who is the partner of this process, was also part of it. And our colleague Sunandan will briefly go through the, uh, the experience of this event but the, basically our, our recommendation to all our colleagues that it is not a typical cities talking to cities, but it is mainly national governments, ministers of urbanization, minister of climate change, and local and regional governments have a discussion. It could be closed meetings, it could be public meetings. This depends on the hosts, and it should be feed into the, to the to process uh, uh, of the, the consultations. In this slides, we would like to show here that we have to translate these three questions of the, the, the presidency. Uh, in the first one, when we are talking about where we are, we mainly would like to have a discussion on where is the sustainable urbanization in the NDCs? How much the urban actions are reflected? Is it, is it enough? Can we think about other action plans? Maybe we have uh, other plans which are not necessarily noted here, or if there are already plans for urban sectors, are the local and regional governments aware of these plans? This was really the case in Canada, for example. We heard Canada is one of the very few countries who have advanced their INDCs with a revision in 2017, but our colleagues were not too much aware of it. And now this is an opportunity for us to discuss in Montreal in June. And then the next question, of course, where do we want to go? The question is how can we raise the ambition of current and future NDCs. There are so many local and regional governments having commitments, as we mentioned. Can we integrate them? Do they complement? Where are the overlaps? Can we formulate some, some innovative mechanisms that can be feeding to the national uh, NDCs so that they, their ambition can be raised higher? And the last question is, of course, how can we make all these changes? There are certain things that we can do this year. We can even take some of those lessons learned. There are some things that has to be done towards 2020 when the second NDCs are developed. And as you see from the previous slides, there is a goal of 
the carbon neutrality or climate neutrality by the mid-century, how are the things should be act of the urban development. Uh, therefore, technical, legal, political changes need to be mapped up. As we said, we are not at point zero. There are so many uh, data available. We would like to make use of this data in our in our in our discussions. Uh, and, and this is the the testimonials or testimonials of our leaders uh, for the cities and uh, regions Talana dialogues. We have received very much ex very exciting commitments and support from the UN Climate Change and 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 uh, cop 23 presidency where we're grateful for their support and uh, last but not least these webinars will be held continues to be held every month every third wednesday so feel free to join us in particular now we will review the submissions and our engagement in the the, the next rounds of the event so this is a conclusion of my inter in input to the webinar Thank you, Yunus, for your presentation, uh, which was certainly quite informative on the um, most um, up-to-date information regarding the progress of the cities and regions, Talanoa Dialogues. Now, before I open the floors for uh, questions, uh, as Yunus mentioned, I would like to invite uh, Sunandan, who is a Senior Program Manager of Global Projects of ICLE, who actually um, conducted a very first series of cities and regions Talanoa Dialogues in Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. So, Sunandan, uh, if you can share with us any further updates on this. Thank you, Jason, uh, and hello, everybody. So just from our side, I'd like to share that uh, at the beginning of this month, that is between the 5th and the 9th of March, we organize a series of cities and regions Talanoa dialogues in Indonesia, the Philippines, and in Vietnam. We were able to do this as part of the Ambitious City Promises project. This is a project that is funded by the German Federal Ministry for the Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety under their International Climate Initiative or ICI program. So this is an ongoing project which is for three and a half years. We've completed one year but which also aims at promoting multi-level climate governance in these countries. So we use this commonality in the aim of the project along with what was being proposed in the Talanoa dialogue process to organize these cities and region Talanoa dialogues. So in terms of a process that we followed was we, uh, we had already established linkages with the national governments in each of these three countries and that's what we are built on and, uh, and we had project cities that we are working with so we had an idea of what the situation in each of the cities was based on needs based assessments that we have undertaken and now we are taking undertaking uh, inventories gg inventories where in the cities where these are not not have have not been done or improving those in which for cities where these inventories already exist and now creating that linkage with the national government we in preparation for this these dialogues we looked at the NDCs of each of these countries and assessed where and how cities and regions have been mentioned within these documents. So in most cases we found that the I mean the link to cities and regions was rather indirect in many cases. For example if you look at the INDC of uh, the of Indonesia it refers to a presidential re regulation that came out in 2011 in which the provinces are mandated to undertake GHG uh, emission inven un inventories so we find that there are past regulations in the case for example in the case of Indonesia as well as some of the new ongoing programs that we found in uh, the Philippines, for example, and some that are being planned for in Vietnam, which are yet to come, which have to be approved by the Prime Minister of Vietnam later this year, which would include the, it would involve the cities and regions in climate actions. But so there are institutional pathways 
and legislations and regulations which are there which could be used but within the ndcs themselves these could be probably referred to a lot more and uh, strengthened so this was these were the kind of discussion points that we started off with and we got the dialogue going in which we had presentations from uh, the relevant ministries we had presentations from the cities and then we had group discussions along the three guiding questions that are there by the UNFCCC. Yeah, one of the main things, approaches that we followed was for these dialogues to be hosted by a relevant government agency in the three countries. So for example, Indonesia, it was the Office of the President's Special Envoy on Climate Change that hosted the Talanoa Dialogue for Indonesia. In the Philippines, it was by the Pasig City, which is part of Metro Manila. And in Vietnam, it was the Vietnamese Institute for Urban and Rural Planning, VIUP, that is part of the Ministry of Construction. So this approach allowed us to you know, en enhance the legitimacy of these dialogues within the national context, helped us ensure participation of key representatives from all levels of government, and as well as created avenues and opportunities for the uptake of the outcomes of these dialogues themselves. Um, so what we did find, uh, we found that it's very useful for the cities and the national governments to actually engage and to understand where they can potentially collaborate on. For example, within the NDCs, uh, the waste and transport sectors have been identified as key sectors, transportation, uh, which is included under the energy sector, and both of these are critical issues within most of the cities that have they have huge waste management problems and transportation due to congestion and uh, lack of public transport is a big issue in most of these cities that we are working with. So these were, for example, identified as sectors that both the national and local governments could work more closely in terms of meeting the NDCs and other climate targets that in terms of commitments that the national government had made. There were also instances of certain programs that have been developed by the national government, such as the Climate Kampung Program, or PROCLIM, which is there in Indonesia, which seeks to involve local communities and local governments a lot more in climate mitigation and adaptation activities. But we, if you look at the NDC, for example, uh, Proclaim is not directly mentioned in that. So in terms of, you know, increase in identifying potential pathways for collaboration and integration between levels of government and improving NDCs, we could uh, look at both these, how these sectors could be, there could be an elaboration on these two sectors or programs such as Proclaim within the respective NDCs. Uh, that we can then take forward. So this is something, the few of the learning that came up from that, we also understand very clearly that this needs to be an iterative process and that it can actually feed into Talanoa dialogues that each of the national governments would then uh, hopefully organize later this year. But we, our hope of actually hosting it within government agencies, the ones that I mentioned to you, were that then the events that we have organized as part supported by the project can feed into the reporting that the national governments make to the UNFCCC. Back to you, Jason. Thank you, Sunandan, for, for your very interesting and important um, updates from your Talanoa Dialogues. Certainly the points that you mentioned are central to, uh, to focus on through the Talanoa Dialogue um, exercise, especially um, focusing on the uh, urban components of NDCs and to ensure the um, holistic linkages between the Paris Agreement, SDGs, as well as new urban agenda. Now with that, uh, I also see uh, Francis uh, joining us today at this webinar. Uh, from California and uh, I was wondering if Francis if you can uh, kindly share with us uh, some of the uh, recent updates regarding the preparation for the Global Climate Action Summit. Francis? Francis can you um, unmute yourself and uh, join? The conversation. Uh, 
it seems he may have some difficulties in his, his microphone is not active. Hmm. Ah, Francis? Okay, maybe we come back to Francis uh, sure. when when uh, the uh, microphone problem is, is solved. Now, um, I see one question in the question box from Maximus, and Maximus, thank you so much for your question, uh, which regards to the term Talanoa. So what is the meaning of it? Where does it come from? Now, uh, the term Talanoa is, uh, Talanoa is a traditional uh, approach used in Fiji and the Pacific to engage in an inclusive, participatory, and uh, transparent dialogue. So uh, guided by this spirit of Talanoa, which is a traditional Pacific um, um, tradition, the vision of the COP23 presidency in launching the Talanoa Dialogue in November last year at COP23 was to really have an opportunity where parties and non-party stakeholders um, gather together to constructively engage in discussions as to how do we work together to raise the ambition of NDCs and meet the long-term goal of uh, the Paris Agreement. So that is how the dialogue uh, came to be known as the Talanoa Dialogue, which originally, uh, according to uh, Decision 1 CP21 mandate, was facilitative um, dialogue. Um, and now I see no other uh, questions, but uh, I got this message from Francis saying uh, she uh, the the mute. Okay, so Francis, uh, can you can you join us now? Great. Hello. Uh, thank you. Hello. All right. I apologize, everybody, as I was struggling to get off of mute. Um, but good evening and good afternoon. Uh, good morning here in San Francisco. Uh, this is. Francis Sawyer, and I'm with Governor Brown's office uh, here in San Francisco and Sacramento, and uh, was so thankful that um, you were able to include us to hear a short word on the preparations for the Global Climate Action Summit, which uh, was mentioned a few times earlier uh, in the conversation um, and is happening here in San Francisco on September 12th through 14th. Um, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with the outlines of the event, but I wanted to provide sort of a short update on uh, how our thinking is evolving and how the planning is coming together, as well as in particular encourage folks to apply to host an affiliate event if that is of interest um, during the week, because that application period is now live. Um, the uh, Global Climate Action Summit is co-chaired by Governor Brown, uh, Michael Bloomberg, Patricia Espinosa, and Anand Mahendra. And the four of them have really come together to highlight, um, just as ICLE has done, um, sub, uh, subnational and city, uh, private sector, and um, civil society action um, to gather momentum toward uh, the Talanoa dialogue process um, and COP24, uh, as well as the INDC um, uh, sort of taking stock that will happen in 2020. Um, and so we're excited to be a part of this trajectory that we're all working towards to increase ambition and um, really double down on our commitments um, and the implementation of those commitments. Um, as I said, the event will take place uh, September 12th through 14th here in San Francisco. And throughout that week, um, we're already having tremendous interest of folks coming together to uh, pull together affiliate events um, in the Bay Area, uh, broadly speaking. So we have a application process that is available at our um, website globalclimateactionsummit.org uh, where you can find um, you know very sort of uh, short um, application uh, that uh, for events held in conjunction with the summit um, those are due on April 13th um, and uh, event organizers will know uh, whether those are going to be a part of the affiliate event program uh, no later than May 31st so we very much uh, encourage you to apply and um, think think about uh, what else might be um, cooking in uh, San Francisco at that time. Um, as sort of a broader overview of the summit itself, as we've uh, honed in on the different challenge areas, um, our hope is really that folks will arrive in San Francisco with uh, tales of um, the success that they've had in implementing um, commitments made so far. 
um, and success stories there, uh, both from governments and uh, corporations and other private actors, uh, in, in particular cities. Um, and those uh, challenges, and that they will also bring challenges within five uh, er uh, challenge areas that we have um, been working with an advisory uh, group to coalesce. So those challenge areas are uh, healthy energy systems, inclusive economic growth, um, of particular interest to those on this call, I imagine, sustainable communities, land stewardship, and transformative climate investments. Um, so, of course, uh, there are, um, you know, many commitments that could lie within that, but we uh, would look forward to talking to anyone um, who is interested in bringing a commitment to San Francisco um, in those areas um, and know that many of you have been in touch with our advisory committee partners at uh, Mission 2020, um, BSR, the We Mean Business Coalition series, C40, um, and others. So uh, thank you so much for the chance to sort of talk a moment about the summit. Uh, we're hoping to see many of you in San Francisco come September. So thank you. Thank you, Francis, for the for the updates that you shared. Indeed, uh, the success of the Global Climate Action Summit uh, will be crucial, and it will set the tone uh, strongly going into um, the pre cop pre cop and uh, COP twenty four. So, um, thank you so much once again uh, for joining us today. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time for you to raise uh, questions. Uh, you can raise your hand, uh, or you can type in your questions uh, for anything. Uh, uh, that has been presented in today's webinar. Uh, we see no further questions at the moment on the questions box, or, or no hand has been raised uh, at the moment. Eunice, is there anything that you would like to further elaborate on? Um, I think it was very helpful for us to hear the experience from in, from Indonesia and other countries in the East, and and then I'm particularly happy to hear Francis' inputs uh, for the preparations of California because one of the things we have to keep in mind that in this summit there will also be a, a release of America's pledge, which is the the American cities, states, and business and universities. How do they? Uh, contribute the implementation of the, the the Paris Agreement in 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 different levels and the stakeholders of U.S. Um, regardless of the position of the federal government, which is exactly the the spirit that now uh, it's 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 a race to the top, and everyone who wants to be part of this game, as as the spoken by the Prime Minister of Fiji, that it is we're in the same boat, and everyone has a role here. So American stakeholders are doing their best to to make sure that they are part of the global movement. It is unstoppable, and and we're excited to 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 see the outcomes as well in the California. Uh, so we will throughout this year, months we will stay tuned and we'll contribute to the preparations. And I think that will be a unique experience uh, from their perspective, but I think it will also kick us a lot of good ideas uh, so that we can come to Katowice and go beyond in the most successful way. Uh, I don't have uh, too much uh, additional comments. I see a number of colleagues from European partners. They already are also preparing a lot of events in Europe. So it will be a pretty exciting period and we'll look forward to continuing our, our engagement and to demonstrate that the implementation and the raising the bar in Paris Agreement will again be on the shoulders of local and regional governments in a significant way. Thank you, Yunus. Um, I see. I still see no other uh, questions or hands raised. So, um, since we have only one hour allocated uh, to today's webinar, we have four minutes left. Uh, in this regard, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any, uh, if there are no other further questions on this, uh, let me start closing this webinar. And. Uh, just to remind you, as at the beginning of the webinar, I mentioned that this webinar has been recorded and all the um, recording and the PPTs will be shared with you. So this will happen upon closure of this webinar. And uh, in the meantime, we are we at Eclair, Eunice and I are available to take
any questions or further um, queries that, that you might have uh, regarding uh, the Talano dialogue process, the NFCCC process, and how cities and regions uh, will engage uh, in, in the um, UNFCCC global process in the lead up to the May sessions as well as uh, COP24. So with that, I would like to thank uh, all of you once again for joining us today. And until we meet again for our next webinar in April, I wish you all the success and best and uh, thank you once again for joining us. Bye-bye. Um.